Hey there, everybody. Last week, we sat down with Dr. Amrita Myers and talked about Richard Mentor Johnson, Martin Van Buren's vice president, and Julia Chin, an enslaved woman that Johnson referred to as his wife. This week, we're going to be delving back into these two to talk about the political impact that their relationship had. Last week, we mentioned that sexual assault of enslaved people was commonplace. So Dr. Myers is a great story to illustrate how what Johnson did was different and why that made him so controversial. The problem is, is that he's just so bold and open about it. If he could just have had more discretion, if he, had, if he could have just been more discreet about it, then nobody would have cared, mm -hmm. right? Henry Clay, let's take Henry Clay, who is from the same state of Kentucky, who is, the, who is a contemporary chronologically of Richard Johnson. They come up together politically and serve together at the same time. Henry Clay is married to a white woman and is a slaveholder, lives very close to Johnson actually. And Henry Clay has, an, has, has a relationship with an enslaved woman. And his wife catches him down in the slave quarters having sex with this enslaved woman, who, by the way, he has a number of children with. And all hell, quite frankly, breaks loose on the clay plantation. So in order to keep the peace on the plantation and in his marriage, Henry Clay sells the black woman and their children down the river to New Orleans to get rid of the evidence and keep the peace with his wife and save his marriage. So this is, and nobody says boo about it. Clay maintains his reputation. He maintains his political career and his marriage. It, and, and this reputation of being this like amazing, you know, Christian abolitionist, et cetera, it's appalling, right? Johnson, on the other hand, has this sort of really uh, unseemly reputation in a lot of quarters even though he doesn't have a white, you know, he doesn't have a white wife and he's not committing adultery. But he would have actually been better off uh, among a lot of people had he had a white wife and been having sex with Julia on the sly and just covered it up. Mm. People were like, if he had just been discreet about it, it would have been fine because that's what all these white men were doing. On the note of Johnson, um... You've 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 sort of referenced it multiple times here, but he has what I will describe as something like a two-faced reputation, uh, in that some people absolutely seem to despise him, and yet he keeps getting reelected over and over, as you said. So uh, I guess how how does he do that, and and where does this where does this come from? He's. He's really beloved in the local community in Scott County because he's seen very much as um, a hero of the poor and the working classes and the downtrodden. And so this is the thing. Richard Johnson is beloved by the common man. And those are the people who keep reelecting him to office year after year after year. Um, but he, he also has this problem that there are a lot of people who find his personal life to be incredibly distasteful. Um, not Again, not because he's having sex with a Black woman, but not discreet about it. Because Jefferson and Clay and Poindexter and others are also having sex with Black women. But they just are lying about it right? They hide it. They're discreet about it. The problem is not interracial sex. The fact, the problem is lack of discretion. But Johnson is just so flagrant, right? He is open about it. And he's not just open about it. He wants people to accept Julia. He wants people to accept his daughters. He has Imogene and Adeline out in public, in open, playing the piano for the marquee. And when, yes, he's a congressman, yes, he's a senator, but when he runs for the vice presidency, this is when the schism appears in his own party. The Democrats are torn apart because within his own party, there are people who do not want him to run as Martin Van Buren's, you know, VP as his number two, 
because they say that's too close to the White House. If Van Buren were to die, Johnson would ascend to the White House. And do you want a, quote, amalgamationist as your president? Because that would bring blackness into the White House. That would bring, you know, biracial children and mixed race grandchildren into the White House. We can't have blackness that close to the highest office in the land. And it it just it literally divided the Democratic Party and it blew it up from the inside because when he ran on, you know, tried to get the nomination for the vice presidency, it blew up the party from the inside out. Richard's, you know, public relationship was something that people did not want to deal with. It was okay while it was, you know, gossip, it was pillow talk. He was a congressman, he was a senator, but once he wanted to run on the ticket, Martin Van Buren wasn't even comfortable with it. He went to Andrew Jackson and said, do I have to do this? I don't want to do this. And Andrew Jackson said, he's my guy. And that is the only reason it went forward but Richard Johnson was the only vice president to, in our entire history where his, where his, you know, he had to actually have his vice presidency confirmed um, in the House, in the and in the House and in the Senate because the elector, the electoral college, it didn't clear the electoral college because the electors of Virginia refused to cast their ballots for him. Why? Because of Julia. The electoral crisis around Johnson plays out exactly as Dr. Myers says. After the electors of Virginia cast their votes for Martin Van Buren to be president, they, instead of casting their votes for Johnson, who was their party's chosen candidate, cast their votes for somebody else who has no chance of winning. This leaves Johnson short of the majority necessary for him to be selected as the vice president of the United States, which means that this is the only time in all of U.S. history that the Twelfth Amendment was invoked to determine who the vice president would be. A vote was held in the Senate, and that vote happened exactly along party lines with Johnson coming out on top. But that means that the real reason that Johnson is the vice president at all is because his party happened to have a majority of seats in the Senate at the time. When searching for reasons as to why it was so difficult to drum up support for Johnson, one Tennessee gentleman put it this way. Johnson had endeavored often to force his daughters into society that the mother in her lifetime and they now rode in carriages and claimed equality. The scandal surrounding Johnson and his relationship with Julia would follow him for the rest of his life. Julia Chin had come to define him. And perhaps in spite of, or because of, the efforts to erase Julia and Johnson from the historical record, she defines him still. We really hope you enjoyed these two videos. Uh, we certainly enjoyed making them. Uh, extra special thanks go out to Dr. Myers for being both willing and able to help us out. It was really amazing to be able to work with a scholar that was doing just cutting edge historical research. Uh, if you're interested, as a reminder, our full length hour long uh, interview with Dr. Myers is on our park website and our YouTube page. So if you have the time, I highly encourage you to check that out. But for now, that's all from me. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time.